Um, so yeah, my name is John Simon, I'm the applications manager here at Intrepid Controls for automotive Ethernet products. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about gateway builder applications for Ethernet. Um, we gateway builder's been out for a while now. Um, it's uh, initially supported CAN and LIN. Um, we've been adding features uh, to it, and one of those features within the last year or so is Ethernet uh, support. So I'm going to show you some an example. Um, if you're not familiar with what a gateway is, it's a source as a conduit uh, to connect information from one vehicle network to another, or maybe even a non-vehicle network to a vehicle network. So it could be something can to can, can to LIN, can to Ethernet, Ethernet to Ethernet, um, or some sort of central gateway tying several networks together. Um, if you've ever had to create your own gateway, um, you've probably done it either programming or if, with our products, uh, we have a function block scripting language that you can set up uh, simple state machines. Um, and it works really well, but it can be pretty tedious uh, depending and to develop and test uh, if your gateways has any complexity to it. So what Gateway Builder is, is a simplified GUI-driven uh, gateway uh, tool within Vehicle Spy Enterprise. So now you can create complex gateways between CAN, LIN, and now Ethernet. So it runs within Vehicle Spy uh, when you're hosting uh, one of our uh, pieces of hardware, or you can compile it to run embedded standalone in the embedded processor of the device. So it can be standalone in a car or, or a bench and, and uh, serve a gateway function without a host computer connected. Um, this is what the interface looks like. Uh, you get to it through the menus, embedded tools, and a gateway builder. And what you'll see uh, on the left side is your input networks. And on the right side are your output networks. So to make a gateway, um, you start, you select your networks and set up rules of what you want to be uh, forwarded and how you want it to go out the other network. So first you start with picking an input network. So in this case, it's probably an iChart, but you uh, drop, there's a drop down menu of all the networks that you have uh, database files for. So in this case, there's CAN, and then you can see all the messages that are loaded for that particular network. So you would select the message or signal from those uh, entries in the database. Then you need to choose what the, the message and which network it goes out. So it's the same interface, drop down menu of all the device, all the networks that have uh, database entries on uh, transmitting messages. And then you have the list of those messages or uh, signals in those messages to choose from. And then from there, you need a rule for, or a function for each uh, message or signal that you want to gateway. So the, the rules can forward between two different networks, just wholesale frame comes in on this network, copy of it goes out on another. You can exclude traffic, so basically filter uh, traffic. You can modify payloads as they pass through, so a CAN message could come in or an Ethernet message for that matter. Um, you can take the payload and change any portion of it um, as it's defined in, in the database. You can decimate messages. So if a message is coming too frequent, you can restrict how frequently it goes out on the uh, target network. And you can map signals from one PDU to another PDU. And that's what you end up doing with uh, like Ethernet to CAN or uh, when one network protocol or type to another. Um, a CAN frame is going to have signals in it. There's no um, equivalent to that in Ethernet uh, frames. So you're usually trying to take a signal from a CAN message and stuff it in a predefined uh, uh, protocol data unit uh, that defines how the message, how the information is organized within the message. And you can also set triggers uh, to send messages uh, based on uh, certain events on, on the network. So the example I'm going to use uh, today for Ethernet and CAN is a, a gateway that will tunnel CAN over Ethernet using what's called audio video transport protocol. And that's the protocol defined in IEEE 1722. Uh, and as the name suggests, it's a transport, transport protocol. 
In this case, it's used for AVB and TSN streams. So that's audio, audio video streams or time sensitive streams. And what the different information you can forward or, or tunnel is broken down into three categories. It could be audio and video streams. It could be a stream for media clock recovery um, across the, the network. So that all like the devices that are involved in the streaming media file have their clocks aligned so you don't have problems with playback. And um, AVTP control format, ACF. And all, all categories of this um, AVTP have the same common stream header. So you have some subtype, which type of uh, information is being sent, some version information, um, a sequence number. So that's used. So uh, on the receiving end, you can see if there's gaps, if maybe frames have been dropped or arrive out of order. Um, there's some format specific data, a stream ID um, unique to the stream, um, timestamp information, um, length information, and then the payload itself. So these are all the different types of or extreme subtypes that you can use in, within AVTP. So you can see here the first uh, five, we have uh, Firewire, uh, AVTP audio format, uh, compressed videos, different compressed video streams, the clock reference format. What we're going to use today is, um, well, there's a time synchronous control format, which is sends time stamp information with the network data. And then there's the non-time synchronous control format, which is the same frame, just minus the uh, timestamp information. And then you can see the video formats and uh, other uh, control protocols. Uh, we're going to focus mainly on this uh, NTSCF, non-time synchronous control format. So within the non uh, the time synchronous control format, these are all the networks and information that you can tunnel. So you can see FlexRay, CAN, LIN, MOST, Serial, GPC, Parallel. Uh, there's a generic sensor uh, uh, format that you can uh, encapsulate just uh, sensor data. Um, anything with brief after it um, means that there's uh, no timestamp information within that payload. Um, and then there's a user defined as well. And there's, there's, a, there's another, uh, I think type in draft, it's supposed to, I forget the name of it, but it's basically a protocol for um, color LED uh, lighting buses. So the time synchronous control format, again, the subtype, the stream ID and information, the timestamp, um, the length, and then the payload. Um, what we're going to focus on is the non time synchronous. I just wanted to simplify it a little bit. Exact same uh, information, just minus the uh, timestamp info. So, this is what an example would look like of a CAN frame or an Ethernet frame containing CAN information. Um, you have the CAN specific information encoded in these bits up here. So, you have uh, you know, whether it's CAN or CAN FD. Um, if it's uh, extended or uh, 11 or 29 bit addressing, uh, the uh, arbitration ID, or, or sorry, that's the CAN bus, the CAN identifiers, the arbitration ID, and then the payload. So, as I mentioned in the earlier slides, you need databases on the transmit and receive uh, networks to, to set this up. So, the first thing we want to do if we want to transmit all the CAN data onto Ethernet is set up a receive message in the database that matches for anything that shows up. So any arbitration ID, any length, any payload. And so you do this by um, selecting the CAN network. Um, in this case, I'm using CAN FD with a 29-bit uh, arbitration ID. Um, put don't cares or X's in the arbitration ID and then leave everything else blank. So this any message that comes in HS can is going to match this and trigger a rule in the gateway builder. Now we have to create a, the format of a message that's going to be sent out. So we've already got the seven, uh, ABTP or IEEE 1722 uh, header information built into vSpy. So you would uh, go to the ethernet network and click you know, plus or add a message. 
and you would choose ether type 1722. And this automatically populates all of the common AVTP header information. So the subtype version, data length, et cetera. But now what we need to do is create the payload or the PU of specific to the, the CAN uh, tunneling uh, sub or subtype. So this is the PDU for uh, ACF CAN brief and I created signals for each of these fields in the, in the, in the, or the transmit uh, message table. So now it's just a matter of mapping the information received in CAN to the, the frame or the PDU that's being transmitted. So we have on the left here, the specific CAN message, and on the right, this specific ACF CAN brief message. It's really taking the arbitration ID, uh, the FD bit, all these status bits and mapping them to equivalent fields in the AVTP frame. And um, let's see, there we go. So I just did a, since I can't do this live, I did a quick video that just shows you what this looks like if I can. There we go. Yeah, here we go. So it's really just drag and drop. I'm dragging the arbitration ID on the left to the arbitration ID field on the right. The DRS uh, bit on the left to the, and this is all drag and drop. Anything that uh, is mapped um, with these rules when the CAN message comes in and uh, the ethernet message will go out with the same information that was received in that CAN frame. So you can see it's once you get the message, if you have the, the frame format set up, once it's, it's really, really quick to uh, create this uh, gateway. And then lastly, uh, dragging the 64 byte payload from CAN to the 64 byte payload of e the Ethernet frame. So you're probably thinking that's it. And I was too, I thought that would be it. But uh, after uh, I was doing this last week, I came across a problem I had thought about in this example. Uh, I panicked for a second, but uh, after a little thought, it uh, wasn't that difficult to fix uh, with a little thought. And so the problem is the gateway builder, uh, as it's currently designed, only is restricted to sending out a fixed size payload. But can FD can have a number of different sizes. Fortunately, it's not one byte increments all the way to 64 bytes. Um, it's these uh, multiples or increments here. So the problem, uh, it's, it's not quite drag and drop, but you don't need to be a programmer either to, to get this to work. So the first thing that popped to mind was create 15 different gateway messages for each size message. And I, that's the brute force way um, and it would work, but the way I arrived at, a little more elegant, is create a single gateway rule, but then have different um, CAN payloads um, for the mapping and then adjust, the, adjust those payloads to fit in the ethernet frame. And what I mean by that is you receive an eight byte payload and you're putting it in a 64 byte field or, or buffer, it's going to be put out here but the problem is the AVTP frame is expecting it here. And then, you know, any uh, length information is going to count uh, from left to right. So uh, if you had an eight byte frame with the gateway I, I just showed you, you would get an empty frame here, or whatever garbage might've been in, in the buffer. Um, so what you do for each different size payload is just bit shift it before you pass it. And you can do that with the gateway builder. You can do arithmetic and logical functions on the uh, either the, the signal received or a, a, lot, a lot of other information available about the networks. So now this is what the message, the received message looks like for CAN. Before I had no payload information. Now I've created a discrete uh, signal for 816. 
Um, I did leave the one through eight out just to kind of make it easier to, to get through in this example. But so each one of these is uh, the length. This signal is the length of the different possible sizes of the CAN frame, CAN FD frame. And so I have one single rule, and then I, I'm here are each of the different size payloads, and they're all being mapped to the single uh, signal or field in the AVTP frame. And so what happens is for each one of these rules, depending on which one hits, in this case, the 8-bit rule, it's taking that value and shifting it 448 bits over. And then each one of these lines here, this has a different value based on what size that actual can uh, frame payload, FD payload looks. One last trick, um, the sequence number. So that's something that's not part of the CAN network, but something that's useful to the gateway information. So um, this expression field here, you can put information from the received frame in there, or you can choose not to. In this case, I, for this particular rule, I just picked any signal that get, that's gonna trigger this when that frame comes in. And then in the expression, I put the counter that vehicle spy is keeping in the background of all the frames received. So every, every can received on, can frame received on the high speed HS can network, uh, this counter gets incremented. And so I'm stuffing that information into the sequence number field of the uh, PDU uh, of the ABTP frame. And finally, this is uh, just demonstrating uh, this working. So here you can see a can frame um, with the 64 byte payload. And then down here, you can see the, the header information, all of it populated. Um, if you were to check it all, it would all match everything uh, in the can header uh, that was received. And then the intact payload here as well. So I did test it with all the different size payloads and make sure it works. But um, so this uh, does work. You could do it for any, really any of those networks uh, for 1722, or this can be applied to any specific application you might have. Um, it's a, I will say it's not quite, it's not really optimized for one reason. I mean, you're always sending a 64 byte um, payload in this. And then the other thing, I mean, if I actually had somebody that could program at my disposal, um, 1722 will let you stuff multiple messages um, in a payload. In fact, you could stuff can and lint and a bunch of different information um, in the subtypes in the payload of the ABTP frame. And then the header information is such that um, it can be parsed on the other side and you can pull out the information that you want. But for something that took me all of, you know, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour to do. I think this is pretty powerful and it can be quickly adjusted.